This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Floyd Patterson got his first opportunity to fight for a championship on November 30th, 1956, when he squared off against Archie Moore for the vacant heavyweight world championship. Right from the start, Patterson's faster hands and overall quickness were giving the old mongoose a lot of trouble. Patterson was exhibiting great balance, solid defense, and a wide variety of offensive angles. In round five, Patterson dropped Archie with a thunderous left hook. Moore made it to his feet, but Patterson soon had him down again, and this time Archie could not beat the count. It was a fifth round knockout, and Floyd Patterson had just become the new heavyweight champion of the world, marking him as the youngest ever heavyweight champion at that time. Patterson made the first defense of his heavyweight world championship on July 29th, 1957, when he had a rematch against Tommy Hurricane Jackson. Patterson dominated this one right from the start. A spirited barrage dropped Jackson as round one was drawing towards a close. Patterson dropped Jackson again with a terrific right hand in round two. Jackson exhibited a lot of heart, but he was absorbing a lot of punishment. Patterson dropped him again with a furious assault in round nine, but Tommy battled on. Another savage assault from Patterson prompted referee Ruby Goldstein to call it off in the 10th. On August 22, 1957, Patterson made the second defense of his heavyweight world championship against challenger Pete Rademacher. Rademacher was making his pro debut, and the Olympic champion dropped Floyd with a couple of nice rights in round two. But Patterson battled back, and he proceeded to ultimately drop Rademacher a grand total of seven times, the last of which was caused by a booming right hand that finally kept the challenger down for the count. It was a sixth round knockout for Patterson. Patterson made the third defense of his heavyweight crown on August 18, 1958, when he went up against undefeated challenger Roy Harris. In round two, Harris landed a nice combo that included a sneaky uppercut that floored the champ. But Patterson persevered and eventually battled his way back. Patterson dropped Harris in round seven and twice more in round eight. Patterson dropped Harris yet again in round 12 and Harris still continued on. But at the end of the 12th, his corner had seen enough and stopped the fight. It was a 12th round stoppage for Floyd. Patterson made the fourth defense of his heavyweight world championship when he squared off against challenger Brian London on May 1st, 1959. Patterson got off to a good start and never looked back as he thoroughly outboxed the challenger. Patterson floored London with a sweet three-punch combination near the conclusion of round 10. In the following round, Patterson unleashed another vicious assault that had London down again, and this time he would not be beating the count. It was an 11th round knockout for Patterson. On June 26, 1959, Patterson made the fifth defense of his heavyweight crown when he went up against undefeated challenger Ingemar Johansson. Right from the beginning, Johansson was doing a good job of disrupting Patterson's rhythm and making him reset. In the third round, Johansson landed a stinging hook followed by a thunderous right hand that dropped the champion. Patterson was badly dazed and was dropped several more times in that round. It was a fine display of heart and courage from the champion who kept doing his best to battle back, but he was being bombarded by the challenger's relentless assaults. After Johansson dropped Patterson for the seventh time in the round, referee Ruby Goldstein had finally seen enough and waved it off. It was a third round technical knockout and Ingemar Johansson had just become the new heavyweight champion of the world. Patterson had an immediate rematch against Johansson on June 20th, 1960. Early in the rematch, Patterson was showing a greater willingness to take risks and he was also being more effective at slipping underneath the champion's jab. 
It was a very tactical affair where Patterson was frequently using his own jab to neutralize Ingo's jab. That enabled Floyd to utilize his faster hands, quicker feet, and better overall athleticism in ways that were providing him with a tactical advantage. In round 5, Patterson landed a crushing left downstairs and he soon followed up with a leaping hook that sent Ingo crashing to the canvas. Johansson beat the count and Patterson began investing to the body before going back to the head with another menacing left hook. Johansson was out cold and he was counted out by referee Arthur Mercanti. Floyd Patterson had just become the first boxer in history to regain the heavyweight world championship. Patterson made the first defense in his second reign as heavyweight world champion on March 13, 1961, when he had a rubber match against Johansson. Ingo's bingo found the mark early and he dropped the champion in the opening round. Moments later, another huge right from Ingo had Patterson down again. Patterson again beat the count, and as Ingo was walking him down, the champion unleashed two big shots, the second of which was a left hook that nailed Ingo. Now the challenger was on the canvas, but he beat the count and survived the round. Over the next few rounds, things settled into a more measured affair. In round six, Patterson landed a left and a couple of big rights that had Ingo down again. Johansson initially seemed like he would be able to get up, but he stumbled back down and could not beat the count. It was a sixth round knockout for Patterson. Patterson made the second defense of his heavyweight crown when he squared off against undefeated challenger Tom McNeely on December 4th, 1961. This one quickly evolved into a mismatch of epic proportions. Try as he might, McNeely was simply no match for the champion, and he was dropped repeatedly. McNeely was down twice in round one, he was down several more times in round three, and he was also dropped a few more times in round four for good measure before referee Jersey Joe Walcott finally counted McNeely out. It was a fourth round knockout for Patterson. Patterson made the third defense of the heavyweight world championship when he squared off against Sonny Liston on September 25th, 1962. Patterson was trying to capitalize on his superior speed, but Liston was simply too strong and too powerful. With about a minute left in the opening round, Liston overwhelmed Patterson with a brutal assault that dropped the champion. Patterson was down and he would not be beating the count. It was a first round knockout and Sonny Liston had just become the new heavyweight champion of the world. Patterson had an immediate rematch with Liston on July 22, 1963. Early in round one, Liston unleashed a clubbing barrage of shots that dropped the challenger. Patterson beat the count, but before long, another brutal barrage from Liston had him down again. True to form, Patterson bravely rose and tried fighting back, but the raw strength of Sonny was too much to endure. Patterson was down for the third time, and this time he could not beat the count. It was another first round knockout for Sonny Liston. Patterson received his next opportunity to fight for a portion of the heavyweight title on November 22, 1965, when he challenged WBC champion Muhammad Ali. Right from the opening bell, Patterson was having difficulty coping with Ali's quicker feet and faster hands. Ali was simply too good and too skilled for Patterson in nearly every facet. A spirited attack from Ali scored a knockdown in round six, and after that, despite his best efforts, Patterson was never able to establish a favorable rhythm. Later in the fight, it had become target practice for Ali, and in round 12, referee Harold Kraus had seen enough and waved it off. It was a 12th round technical knockout for Ali. Patterson's next title fight happened on September 14th, 1968 when he challenged WBA heavyweight champion Jimmy Ellis. This one was a hard fought competitive battle of tactics and positioning. 
Patterson appeared to score a knockdown in round 14, but it was officially ruled a slip. At the end of 15 rounds of action, the lone judge in the contest, referee Harold Vallon, scored the bout 9-6 in favor of Ellis. The decision was somewhat controversial, and this wound up being the final championship contest during the long and illustrious Hall of Fame career of Floyd Patterson. In conclusion, with regards to championship contests, all of which took place at heavyweight, the final championship record for Floyd Patterson consisted of 13 contests, with 8 victories, 5 defeats, 0 draws, and all 8 victories coming by way of knockout. Thanks for watching everyone, hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.